Hello, students. Hello. Good morning to you all. It's my pleasure to be in your midst this morning. I overheard all that your teacher and the principal has said, and I'm so amazed. I'm so amazed at your performance. Just give yourself, just celebrate yourself. And I also want to say thank you to the teachers. You for doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much for the good work you're doing. Like one of your aunties said, there's no child that is a dunce. No child that is dull. The only thing that we have is that we have different levels of assimilation. Some people might take them one hour to understand what the teacher is teaching. So I may take them two hours. I may take them, maybe they need to go back home and revisit what was taught in the class. So nobody is dull. I learned that from my dad growing up. He always tell, told us that none of us are dull, except you chose to be dull. Everyone is intelligent. We are uniquely blessed by God with Amen. different potentials. Amen. Celebrate because I know that amongst you here are governors, yeah. wives of presidents. Education. Please don't play with your education. studies. It is very, very important. Whatever you're going to be in life, even if you don't want to be a medical doctor, that you want to be an artisan, but you need a level of understanding, information to whatever you want to do. I grew up, I have a father who was a carpenter. He always told my younger brothers that even if any of you want to be a carpenter like me, go to school. That when you're educated, you have a better information and you have an edge over someone who is not educated. Now we are at the computer level age. Information is very, very key. That is why you see some people are struggling in life because they didn't have the information that many of us were privileged to have. So you should count yourself lucky that your parents were able to bring you to school. If you go out in the street, you see some children hawking. It's not because they don't desire to be in school, but because they found themselves at that circumstance. So celebrate yourself, appreciate your parents, and also appreciate your teachers. Because without them, without them, you will not get the information that you need. So I want to implore you to be wonderful children, please. Don't join cults. Please, I beg you in the name of God. If you love yourself and love your life and love your family and believe that you have something to offer this nation, not just your family, then you do yourself the good not to join cultism. Stay away from wrong friends. They say, show me your friend and I will tell you who you are. So the kind of friend you associate with could either make you or destroy you. And I'm sure you don't want anybody that will destroy your future. Yes. So your future is in your hands. Nobody can make you look less. Nobody can come out and tell you you cannot be this. The only person that can stop you is yourself. All you need is to study and be self-determined that I'm going to make it in life. And you will surely make it. With God on your side and you study hard work. Hard work is important. There is no easy way to success. If anybody tells you that it's, and it's an easy way to success, the person is a, is a liar. Let me now give you an illustration. If you want to climb a ladder now, do you put your hands in your pocket? No. So you must hold the ladder to be able to climb up. That should tell you that nothing in life comes easy. Nothing in life comes easy. easy. If you want to achieve or attain excellence in life, then must, you must, you must apply wisdom, hard work. All of us are all ordinary human beings. But what makes us extraordinary is that extra effort that some of us put. I am what I am today because I had a parent who believed in girl child. You know, gone are the days when they said women, they, are, they end up in the kitchen. These days, women don't end up in the kitchen. We have great women everywhere. We have women as breadwinners of their homes. Yes. Okonji Wala today is a woman. She is chauffeur driven by a man. The whole world. You see the level she attained in life. If her parents didn't believe in education or she didn't believe in herself as a woman, 
Probably she would have been a housewife. And every morning you see a time rapper, and that is the end. But today you are fortunate to be in school, you will become great, and you also raise your children to be greater than you. Yes. Your children must not stop at your level. Yes. They will be better than where you are today. My parents, my dad didn't have the opportunity to go to, go to school, but he made sure, because he always told us that he may not be able to give us money or buy us cars, but he will make sure that if we want to get to any level in life, he will make sure, even if it means to sell properties, for us to get educated. Because he felt that knowledge, when you have it, no man can take it away from you. Money, anybody can take away from you. But you see, when you have that knowledge, even if they put you in a dark place, because you have information, you'll be able to come out from there. But someone who don't have information, the person is like, is doomed. We're not telling you to get educated because you want to get one white collar job. No. But for you to recreate jobs yourself. Growing up, I told myself I will never work for anybody. And as I'm standing here today, I have never worked for anybody. Growing up, I went to school and I told myself I will be an employer of labor. I have people working for me that I pay salary. I have never worked, I've never answered anybody yes sir or yes ma. So you too can be like that, even greater. So nothing should stop you, nothing whatsoever should stop you. Make up your mind and you will get the sky is just your starting point. Not, you know, before they used to say the sky is the limit. Now you will shatter the glass ceilings. You will blast it. When they say there is no door, you blast it and enter. Opportunities everywhere. Nobody can tell you there is no opportunities. When I first left home, I left home as a young lady. And I told myself I will not sleep my way through. The success I made was through God and through hard work. The first time I did, I was doing phone call business. I bought a table and a chair because I didn't want to mess myself around. And to God be the glory, I was able to become what I wanted to be. Nobody stopped me. Even when my dad heard it, my dad wasn't happy. And I told him, I said, it's only for a while. But today, I can only tell you about when I, I was doing phone call. I can't go back to doing phone call business anymore. I have passed that level. So that is why you are in the class. You start from nursery. From nursery, you pass nursery school. You get to primary. From primary, you get to secondary. From secondary, you get to university. Then if you want to do your master's, you can go ahead. If you want to do your PhD, you can go ahead. So nothing, nothing should limit you. You are limitless. You are limitless. Tell yourself every morning you wake up, I am limitless. Nothing can stop me. I can be who I want to be. I can be who I want to be. Regardless of where I'm coming from. Regardless of where I'm coming Some of us can come from a poor home, but that will not stop you from being wealthy. Where you were born does not determine where you will be tomorrow. The only person that can determine that is you and God. So it's a settled matter. Your future is bright and spotless. So nothing can stop you. So I want to congratulate you. I can see your well behaved. I love you. I love you. I celebrate you. So let me now introduce. I know when I started, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Christabel Silver John. Christabel Silver John. Can you hear me? Yes. What did I say my name is? Christabel Silver John. Good. Clap for I am a representative of Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation. Give me your ears now. I represent Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation, an organization that is committed to touching lives positively. We go to communities in various states. We do mental outreaches, education. We support children who are from low-income family, who their parents might not be able to take them to school. We take them off the streets. We support them, pay their tuition fees, buy them uniforms and their school books, and we send them back to the class. Because we want every child to be great. So they, students are the leaders of tomorrow. So if we want these children to lead us tomorrow, then we must equip them today. Because the children we don't take care of today will end up hurting us tomorrow. We hear of terrorism everywhere. Kidnappers everywhere, armed robbers everywhere. Some of them are because they are from failed homes. That is why they are what they are today. And you are opportunity to be in school because they want you to be a better person. So today we have come to talk about menstrual hygiene management. I don't know, the girls here, are you, are you all menstruating? 
Okay. You're going to be learning about it. I don't want noise, please. I don't want noise. We're going to be talking about menstruation. For those who are menstruating, I want somebody to come and give me a definition because I know some of you have done biology or integrated science to tell me what menstruation is. Who can help me define? Come on. Who is waiting on her? Come. Come now, come. Come on. Come on. So can you tell us what menstruation is? Menstruation simply means the monthly flow of blood from the vagina. Clap for her. Very and short. Why do you come? Menstruation. I love her voice. See the way she, she really spoke like the future leader. Stop laughing. Uh -huh. Menstruation. This is the period whereby the ovaries are already strong enough that they break through. And when they break through, 0, 0 0.5 to 1.5 percent of blood meets up with it, and it drops through the vagina. Mm. And everything and it's very That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. She said, 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 Menstruation is the most flow of blood from the vagina by every woman or child bearing. Okay, good. That's all. They are, they are, they are all correct. Menstruation, simply put, is the flow of blood from the uterus to the vagina every month. You see, for instance, now. Please stop, stop here. You are a boy, but tomorrow you are going to be a father. My father was the first person who bought me my sanitary pad when I started menstruating. So you need to have this information. So I don't want boys, I want absolute silence. Use that cane. So you see, every month, for every girl who has attained puberty age, who has gotten to the age of menstruation, every month an egg is being released. You see, to come down here and is waiting for, but that is not your level. The wall begins to thicken here. And when there is no sperm to fertilize that egg, it breaks and sheds and comes out as menstruation. It comes out as blood. Did you understand what I just said? Yes. Good. Okay. So every month, a woman releases an egg, either from the left or from the right or from the left. She chooses where it comes from. The egg is being released every month. So it comes, it keeps coming down. When it gets to the uterus, where no sperm fertilizes that egg, it sheds and breaks down, comes out as the blood that comes out every month from the woman that is of puberty age. But I also want to tell you that there are girls who start menstruating and their menses are not regular. It takes two to three years for your menses to become regular. You can see your menses this month and it will not come till the next two months or the next three months or the next four months. Or it might start coming every month it all depends some of us didn't have the awareness that you are having today for those who have not started menstruating some people don't know what is menstruation until the start which is not right it's good for every woman every boy to know what menstruation is all about you have sisters at home you have sisters at home with the information you get here today you can go home and educate your sisters so it's not this, you know, we grew up with this taboo that menstruation is a taboo. Menstruation is not a taboo. It's a normal biological flow that a woman, every woman, if you don't menstruate, you can't have a child. Yes. I hope you know that. Yes. So you need to be proud of yourself. You are your future, you are the future mothers. If you don't menstruate, no child for you. So you should be proud of yourself. You know, those days in the village, when you want to enter the young band, they will first of all ask you, are you menstruating? 
Once your messenger will tell you to stay away, it has nothing to do with the young bar. This is something that is inside your body. Like sometimes my father will ask you, if you want to give him his drugs in the morning, he will ask you, are you my son? You know, answer. It has nothing, it's just a normal thing. But because they don't have that information, they lack knowledge. So they all feel that when a woman is menstruating, you will come and desecrate whatever they are doing. There is nothing wrong with that woman, and it's not a sickness. It's a normal thing for every woman to go through. So I'm going to be teaching you tips. So now I'm going to be teaching you, please, can somebody help me? Tips on how to maintain menstrual hygiene. When you're menstruating, you know some of some people, because maybe they lack sanitary pads, they will wear one sanitary pad from morning till night. It is detrimental to your health. You don't keep one sanitary pad on until evening. It is ideal you change every four to six hours. But for some people, their menstrual flow is very heavy. You cannot say because my auntie said wait till four to six hours, you keep it. Once your pad is full, discard it. You take it off. You don't hold it. And I'll teach them how to. I'll do all that. So you need to do that. You change. And then there's this one we call, we call reusable sanitary pads. I don't know if any of you have seen it. This one is, you can use it for more than a year. Yes. You wash, you know, some of us, we use pieces at home, don't we? So let us stop pretending. <laughs> Some children who are from poor, if you're very, if you're from a very comfortable home, clap for yourself. But there are some children who come from families that they find it even difficult to feed, let alone buy sanitary pad. The cost of sanitary pad now has gone high. Some family have two, three, four girls who menstruate every month. So check it. That cost of that pad for those girls can give them a pot of soup. Some girls use more than two packets in a month, depending on their flow. So check it. So this one comes affordable. Instead of using the pieces, this one is very easy. You see, just like the normal sanitary pad, you put it in your pants and you pin it. Wow. <laughs> That key. Show example. For this one, it will not stay because how it was made. So do you understand? Yes. And when, after using this, you make sure you wash properly. After washing, you sun dry. Don't dry inside the room. Let the sun heat it because of germs. I beg you. Even the pieces. Those of you who use pieces at home that cannot afford sanitary pad, wash your very well and sun dry. If there is no sun, you can use iron for those who have access to iron. And make sure you wash with clean water, please. And you, after using, you keep it back for the next month. So, so you see, there is another one that is called... So there's another one that is called uh, the menstrual cups. Hello. It's not on. It's on. There's another one that is called the menstrual cup.
So this is the one I just showed you. Okay, okay. So this is the one I just showed you now, the reusable sanitary pad, the one you can wash that is made of clothes. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Then this is the menstrual cup I was talking about. It's like a funnel, but it's a plastic, like silicone. This very one you insert inside the vagina and it collects the blood. So when the blood is full, you pour the blood away and then rinse the cup.
You can see this, the, the, the gum behind it is having it to stick fold well. So once you're done, don't put it inside the toilet. Please. Get a dustbin or get a paper and wrap it inside and then burn. If you can't burn, throw it in a dustbin that's where it will be properly disposed. Did you hear me? Yes. For some who have pig toilets, you can throw it inside. But make sure you discard it properly. And after that, you wash your hands. And then you put another pad. Thank you very much. So I want to take, I want to show you, for those who don't know how to count your menstrual circle, Do you know how to count your time, your, your mental time? Yeah. For example, today's date is what? 15th of July. And where is 15th here? This is 15th. Yes. Today's 15th. So you start from today, you let's say at maximum five days. For those of us who menstruate five days, you begin to count one. Two, three, four, five. This is your five day five where you end your menses. But you continue to count six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Wait, I know, I wait. Please wait. There are some people who have short circle, who have between 24 and 25 days. Some 26, some 28, some 32 days. For those who have longer, longer circle. So you saw the way I counted it. So when you count it, if you are 24, you stop at 24. If you are 25, you stop at 25. If you're 28, you stop at 28. But how do you get to know if you're 24 or 25 or 26 or 28 days? You need to keep a regular check of your menstrual flow for three months. For instance, you started in July, you started 15th. You write it down. Then the next month again, you take a record when the next month starts. Then you take another record again in the third month. Then you now check the interval. That will help you know whether you're a short circle or a longer circle. You know why this thing is important? It will put you in check. Like for me, I know my circle, my circle is 25 days. My message comes every 25 days, at most 26 days. I begin to go out with a sanitary pad in my bag. So that when you're caught unaware anywhere, you will not be stained. When you feel anyhow, you quickly go somewhere and then put your pad because you have a sanitary pad in your bag. But if, you're, if you don't carry it, if you don't know this, it can disappoint you anywhere. Another way you can do, you see this thing, it's called the menstrual band. You can do this for yourself. This can help you if you're not close to a calendar. Count this color, this green color, or the blue color, 28, and then the red one, five, signifying your five days of your menstrual flow. And the red one, five. That is a total of how many? 28 and five. So that will help you do this. If you don't have this close to you, so this will help you. So where is that tip? Where is the tip? And again, uh, I want to also encourage us as women. You don't wash your vagina with soap. 
don't use soap to wash your V pads. Don't say because if you don't wash with soap, it will smell. It will not smell. There's a natural odor that comes from there. Except for those who have infection, don't wash your vagina with soap. Wash with just water. The vagina has an antibacterial function that cleanses itself. Don't say because if I don't wash with soap, it will not be clean. No. Use just water to wash that place. I'm not talking for boys. I'm talking about the girls. Wash with just water, please. Don't use soap. Because the more you use soap, there's a pH level in your vagina that constant using of soap will make you reduce it and make you prone to having infections. That is why we don't encourage you to use soap. Do you now understand why I say don't use soap? Yes. Your full big hair, please, make sure you keep it clean. This, I, I've, I learned when I was in secondary school, there's a particular, because I went to a boarding school, a particular girl had lice in her pubic hair, yes. Because she was not keeping it clean, she was not bathing properly. Please bathe at most, at least twice every day. How many days did I say? Twice every day. If you can bathe up to three, at least two times, morning and before you go to bed. Please, please. When your armpit hair is full, cut. Don't leave it that, please. Be cool. So you don't smell. You don't, you know, begin to ooze. And when you when come close, you, you, everybody's running away from you. As a girl, you can't be doing shakara and the whole place is stinking. Your dental cavity, you know, cavities. Keep your, your teeth, your mouth clean at all times, please. General cleanliness. Boys, Vigo, when it's time for you to shave your hair, shave your hair and stop carrying hair like a mad person. My name is Ohashi Manuel Akshiso. I'm from SS2B. But the name of my school is Mamit Secondary School, I want to thank you that God brought you guys here for you guys to impact knowledge it was. Many of us don't know what menstruation is. Many of us don't know how to take care of ourselves. But I want to thank you for your endeavors. I want to thank you, Raw Head, for coming to our school for coming to give us information about menstruation and how to take care of ourselves. We say thank you and we pray for the Almighty God to continue to guide you, protect you, see you through, continue to bless you. We shall never lack in Jesus' name. We say we praise God and may his name alone be glorified. We want to thank our principal for inviting you guys here. May she be replenished more and more in Jesus' name. We pray for our teachers, Lord God, to guide them and protect them. May you guys go to a higher place in our mighty name of Jesus. The vice principal, the staff, the students of community secondary school in the Valley. We are grateful. We are grateful. We thank you for all the teachings. We thank you for the wonderful gifts we have given to the students. And we believe that God, who brought you people here, your purpose will be achieved. And just like our auntie said, the sky is not even the limit. We will rise above the sky. And this foundation will continue to work stronger, even more than you people expected. And by the grace of God, we are looking forward to seeing you people again in this hall. We appreciate your coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. I am Abu Nkemakon, I'm principal of Community Secondary School in Eva Valley. And I want to thank God and to thank Rohel for making our time amongst your busy schedule to come and be with us today, being the 15th of July 2021. To come and teach the less privileged students that we have here. To also share part to them. I want to say that we have benefited so much, both the students and the teachers, because I know that even the teachers have learned some things from you people this morning. And I want to thank you. This is a foundation. Nobody is funding you. No government is funding you. And my prayer for you is that in no distant time, you have partners 
both from within and outside the country, people that will make your dreams come true. If your dreams are only known to you, we don't know the goal, and we believe that having brought out this time to help the less privileged, that God is going to lift you up beyond uh, the places you have imagined you are going to be. So thank you so much. We don't have so much to say, you know, this is thank you. We are so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go and do the vote. Where is the girl that has the bag? Okay.